Do you have a C8 Corvette? Would you like to learn more about it? Well, let's do that. Meanwhile, take a look at this quick cartoon. It pretty much exemplifies not only Corvette owners, but many people with nice cars. Hey, hello, all you wonderful Corvette fans, Corvette owners, C8 owners, and future C8 owners. Hey, so I am Bert. Hope you're having a nice day. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. This video has a list of things that still might be interesting to y'all. Uh, this is my ninth video for C8 observations. And in this one, I'll be going over more of stuff like the transmission, um, you know, just general run-of-the-mill stuff. Here is actually my list right here. I will tell you briefly about the hot transmission warning, idling in first gear, or getting into neutral, downshifting, then moving to passing in automatic mode and in manual mode, trip counter disappears. I will be giving you information that will come straight from the owner's manual or from experience. All right, so I hope this will be interesting to y'all and let's have some fun. Let's begin by addressing the hot transmission warning message. In the owner's manual, it says that you will get a hot transmission message when the fluid's hot. So do not drive under this condition. Stop, idle, let the transmission cool down. This message clears when the fluid is cooled. Over on the left hand side, I altered my tiles so that I could monitor my transmission fluid because I drive a lot of windy streets down in East Texas, kind of up in my Northeast Texas area, and when I go across the border into the mountains. We drove for eight hours, I pushed the car, and right here, under the transmission fluid tile, it suddenly popped up with, I believe I recall 187 for the temperature, and the whole display right there changed. Now I was watching my trip counter, which is over on the right hand side in this larger tile. Now when the message came up, it filled that whole tile space and it went back and said basically transmission was hot, uh, stop and idle until the transmission fluid cools and that was basically the message. I slowed the car down, I drove minimally and within just hardly even five seconds, maybe even less than that, these messages disappeared. And I really can't tell you any more than that. Just if you're out and you're driving for a very long time or pushing the car, keep that transmission tile up. Have it fixed somewhere where you can monitor it and just be ready for something like this. Personally, I don't see how stopping and idling will cool the fluid down. I would think that having air passing over all the coolers would be ideal while driving slowly, not pushing the car. In case you think that my quick little problem could have been something else, I would like to just say no. Um, it was not overheating because of coolant leaks or anything like that. I don't think so. It was not heating because of internal transmission faults related to components. I don't believe that's it. And, you know, I was just pushing it, kind of like Amelia Hartford. If you don't know who Amelia Hartford is, she has her own YouTube channel. So one other problem some people might have is they will add these little protectors on the front radiator grills, or actually it's the front AC condensers. But no, I don't think 
this is my issue because I don't have these. But some of y'all might, and if you do, you might want to, you know, keep this information that I'm giving you in mind. Uh, she was having a lot of front uh, grill damage, and so uh, she was looking at the AC condensers that are in front of the radiators, and they were getting pulverized. So she replaced those front AC condensers and put these protectors on there. So if you've done this, just be careful. Like I said, keep that transmission temperature tile up and just keep an eye on that. Especially if you drive long hours aggressively or both. Another reason why this hot transmission message popped up could be because of, well, transmission fluid. Now, in the owner's manual, track events and competitive driving, well, they tell you what to do. They say add two more quarts of transmission fluid prior to tracking. Now, I'm not saying that I need these two quarts, but I am saying that when I drive for many hours aggressively on these twisty roads and hills, it's virtually the same thing. This topic is something that some of y'all may think about or be curious about. It's idling, which is you idle actually in first gear, not neutral, regardless of whether you're in auto or manual mode. Here I go back to the manual again. Read the section on dual clutch transmission, DCT. So, this says, caution, the vehicle is not designed to stay in neutral for extended periods of time. It will automatically shift into park. All right, I'm in drive mode, automatic, going down my street, and I'm going to get up to fourth gear, and now putting on the brakes you can just see it rev matches and goes down to the lower gears on its own don't have to do any fancy stuff when I stop we stop in first gear as I just illustrated the car will downshift all the way to first gear when you come to a stop just as it says here in the middle column of this portion of the manual. In the other column, it'll tell you that you can't downshift beyond what your speed is. So there is built-in software that won't allow you to harm the transmission by doing that. Now, what you can do is double paddle D-clutch. Here the car is in first gear. I am in drive. See, we're not going anywhere. So this is normal. If I want to go into neutral, I have to pull back on both of the paddles simultaneously. Okay, now I'm in automatic mode. I'm in first gear, I'm sitting, not going anywhere. I'm gonna pull back on both of the paddles at the same time. You see the D goes gray, you are in neutral, and you'll see the D flashing as well on the uh, selector switch. So still sitting, not going anywhere, I let go, and we are back into first gear, ready to go. I am in manual mode. We are just sitting here idle, not going anywhere. I'm going to pull back on both paddles at the same time. All right, so now we're in neutral. And when I come down here and look at uh, the selectors, you'll see the manual mode selector button is flashing. When I let go of the paddles, there you go. You're back in first. Let's talk a little more about downshifting while you're driving in manual mode. Let me go down my road right here. 
and I will give you an example of driving in manual mode downshifting. You really don't have to work that hard to downshift. The car will shift down into first gear for you very nice and easily. All right, going into manual mode, first gear, get ready to go down my road. And I'm gonna go ahead and start shifting up. Shifting at about 2K. So I'm at fourth. Now I'm up to fifth. Now I'm gonna to come to a stop. It's down shifting on its own. You can see I'm coming to a stop and I'm putting my foot on the brake and it has down shifted on its own. Okay, I wanna talk about quickly accelerating and then decelerating back to your original cruise speed. I'm gonna show you what it's like when you are in automatic mode You've passed somebody up quickly, and now you want to resume your regular cruising speed. So, here we go. Alright, now, so we'll say I just passed somebody up. Still in sixth gear, high revs, I'm coasting. I'm not touching the paddles or doing anything. I'm gonna put my foot on the gas now a little bit. It's still in sixth gear wondering what I'm going to do next. So it's taken this transmission a very long time to figure out where I am, what I'm doing. But that's what happens if you do not interact with the paddles or do anything with the car you just pass somebody up and then you just get back to cruising all right let's do this again now in manual mode all right now i'm in manual mode i really need to go down into say sixth gear or sixth 80 went up into ninths. All right, now I want to slow down. I'm going to keep it in seventh gear and cruise. Now I'm switching up to eighth gear. Fine. So to me, if you're going to pass somebody up, it just is smarter to try to learn to use the manual mode over automatic. Here's something that trips me out. You go out, you start up your car, you had left the trip counter on from previous drives, and there it is. That's what you would expect. Hey, just got back in the car after driving around making some videos. Let me move the camera so there's not such a glare. And looky, the trip counter. It went away. It's not there. So it's intermittent, but yeah, every now and then I get back in the car, trip counter has disappeared. Nothing there. For some reason, every other time my trip counter display is blank. I either have to scroll down to trip counter two or go through reset. Well, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate y'all watching this video and hope it has been instructional and given you a little bit of uh, feedback on maybe some things that you've been wondering about. So with that, relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.